Unless you spent the last 20 years living under a rock-type Pokemon, you probably know about Eevee. This Pokemon with the unique trait of being able to evolve into a whopping 8 different species of Pokemon, with the trainer having the ultimate say over which one of these cute forms to make their Eevee into. This Gen 1 Pokemon, introduced with only three different evolutions in Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon, has gradually expanded its evolution pool to this point where no other Pokemon can evolve into half the number of Pokemon Eevee evolves into. This has led to every new generation introduction being filled with speculation regarding whether a new evolution would be added, and what would the next type of cute fox thingies be. That brings us neatly into the subject of this video, which types of evolutions have the most potential to be absolute banger Pokemon, and which ones are just not that much of a big deal? Let's find out. Now, we would never make the heretic assumption that Game Freak would now be able to design a pleasant looking evolution of any type, particularly after how great many of the Gen 9 designs have been, but how about the actual substance behind the charming aesthetics? We're more interested in types that would make for interesting evolution from a gameplay competitive standpoint. Thus, for each of the 9 types that are yet to receive an evolution, we'll try our best to make the most interesting evolution and rank the types based on how cool things can get. However, since the Pokemon we're theorizing about are evolutions, they must fit some criteria based on the existing evolutions. 1. The new evolutions are monotypes of their respective types. We cannot have an evolution that is dual type. The new evolutions must have abilities that evoke their types. Most abilities of the existing evolutions are reminiscent of their types, such as Flareon Flash Fire or Sylveon Pixelate. Now, you can argue that Guts on Flareon, for instance, is not necessarily a typical fire type ability, but this restriction will make our thought process more fun. The new evolutions must have a stat line that fits the theme of the previous ones. See, all previous evolutions had not only the exact same base stat total of 525, but they also had the same exact stats of 130, 110, 95, 65, 65, and 60. The only difference between them being how these values were allocated to each stat. Our custom evolutions must also respect that constraint. Four. And finally, we will not consider any generational gimmicks, such as Dynamax or Z-Moves. New evolutions will hypothetically exist in a new generation that is either without a gimmick or with a gimmick we know nothing about. With our rule set defined, let's start making our tier list. First type we got is Flying. For the Flying type, we notice that it resists 3 or is immune to 4 types, is weak to 3 attacking types in Ice, Rock, and Electric, hits 3 types super effectively, and is resisted 3 types as well. This spread is kind of not very good offensively or defensively, except for the ground immunity as you don't really care about resisting bug and grass that much, and being hit by rock, ice, and electric is kind of massive as they're all really good offensive types. We were kind of expecting flying to go into C tier, but then we realized something. The ability Wind Rider kind of makes sense for a flying type. What Wind Rider does is that you're immune to wind moves such as Icy Wind or Heat Wave, and if you're hit by a wind move or use Tailwind, you get plus one attack. What this means is that giving this Pokemon Tailwind and Wind Rider, which would make sense for a pure flying type, basically granted an improved version of Dragon Dance. Add a stat spread that provides good attack and speed and you will get a Breezeon. An absolutely broken Pokemon that will sweep things left and right like no Pokemon before. This Pokemon also provides an interesting take on concepts like Tornadoes by embracing the Fast Glass Cannon pure flying type concept even further. For that reason, flying type evolution goes to A tier. Next up is Dragon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, dragons are awesome, dragons are so cool! But if you really think about it, that is kind of a problem, isn't it? If all dragons are so cool, how can our pure dragon evolution bring something new to the table? 
If we talk stats, a lot of dragons have great stats. If we make our evolution a fast attacker like the flying type one, we'll just have a worse dragapult due to lack in the useful ghost type offense. If we try to make it a bulky attacker, so many dragons are great bulky attackers. Making it a wall would perhaps be interesting, but all we're doing is making a dragon type Umbreon. And as far as we can see, there are no abilities reminiscent of the dragon type that are not already greatly leveraged by existing dragon types, such as Intimidate Salamence or Multiscale Dragonite. Thus, a dragon evolution, which we are not even bothering to name, goes to F tier in our opinion. Press F to pay respects. Next up, we have Rock. Rock is an interesting type. It's weak to a whopping five types, which makes it absolute garbage defensively, but offensively, it hits four types super effectively and is only resisted by three, only one of which is a great defensive type in Steel. This explains why all the relevant Rock type Pokemon have never been pure walls. What this means is that our best bet is for our Rock type evolution to be offensive rather than defensive. Another perk of the Rock type is that it gets a special defense boost in Sandstorm. This is one of the main reasons that Tyranitar was, and still is, an absolute terror of a Pokemon. This Pokemon also had the benefit of being one of the few choices you can get for a Sandstream setter in a dedicated Sand team with Sand Rush Sweepers like Exadrill for a deadly combo, which brings us neatly to a great idea for an evolution. What if we had a Sandstream setter that was actually fast? All Sandstream Pokemon are very slow by nature, so in comes Stoneon. It will fill a unique niche by allowing it to set the Sandstorm without being slow, making up for the possibility of Sand teams to be much more aggressive. Another option is to have it be a Rock-type Sand Rush Sweeper in Sandstorm. This Pokemon can quickly become very bulky on the special side with Calm Mind and Sandstorm special defense boost, rendering it a terrifying Calm Mind Sweeper. Yet another option is a sturdy suicide lead. With moves like Taunt and Stealth Rock, a Rock-type Pokemon with the ability Sturdy will act like a great suicide lead and provide momentum for its team better than previously existing Rock-types such as Aerodactyl, which relied on Focus Sash. Thanks for having this many unique options, Rock-type definitely goes to S tier. Next up, we have Poison. Poison's offensive capabilities are, well, kind of not up to it. With Steel being immune to it, four types resisting it, and only Grass and Fairy being weak to it. What this means is that Poison types can't really be fast attackers unless they have a second type, which our evolutions don't. Now, on the defensive side, Poison isn't too shabby. It resists five different types, and it's only weak to two. This makes Poison-type walls and tanky offensive Pokemon very interesting. In fact, there already exist great Poison-type walls such as Clodsire, Toxapex, and to some extent, Galarian Weezing. This means our Poison-type evolution must compete with those Pokemon, who often have great secondary typings to help them as well. But there is an ability that may help us do that. In comes Corrosion. Corrosion is an ability so far only learned by Glamora and Salazzle that allows the Pokemon having it to poison any Pokemon, even Steel and Poison types. What this means is that a Corrosion Pokemon using Toxic can't really be answered defensively. Worse than that, Eevee gets Protect and Wish, which makes the perfect setup for Sleezion, a very degenerate stalling machine. As long as Sleezion is paired with a Pokemon like Dondozo that can handle setup sweepers that try to exploit it, this Pokemon is an absolute nightmare to deal with. If this Pokemon existed, we would not be surprised it would be broken and require a ban from formats such as Smogon OU. Thus, we place Poison Evolution in the B tier, even though it probably deserves more, but we just hate stall that much. Next up, we have Ground. Now, Ground is kind of a close relative to Rock, since they're both prominent on Sand teams, 
and besides that, it's actually nice offensively as it hits 5 types for super effective damage, including Steel and has Earthquake, which is a fantastic move to have Stab for. Now, there are of course amazing ground types such as Garchomp, Landorus, Therian, or the recently introduced Pokemon CEO Elon Tusk. What all these great Pokemon have in common though is the fact that they're all dual types. Each of them has a second type that is used to complement ground offensively or defensively. If we only look at pure ground types, the best ones are Dugtrio, which is only good because of its absolutely broken ability, and some tanky slow Pokemon like Kapaldon, Donphan, and Mudsdale. So, for a change, we could make our ground evolution Earthion, a fast glass cannon. Now, the Sandstream ability is definitely worth considering, but we considered giving it Rocky Payload as well. What Rocky Payload does is give our Pokemon stab on its rock type moves without it being rock type. This is great because rock and ground is an amazing offensive pair that no single type resists. We definitely wish we could find better ideas for a ground type evolution, but alas, we did not. So, C tier it is. Except if someone in the comments section finds some genius idea, I guess. Next up, we have Steel. Now, let's put this bluntly. Steel is not a great offensive type. It hits fairy, rock, and ice, but it's resisted by four types, including the massively important steel and water. The appeal of the steel type lies predominantly in its defenses, which are the best an individual Pokemon type can offer. Steel resists a whopping 10 types and is immune to poison too. Steel has three important weaknesses in fire, ground, and fighting, but the sheer number of resistances makes it incredibly useful. Now, like with ground types, the best steel types are dual types like Ferrothorn, Scizor, Skarmory, and Magnezone, who each have their own secondary typing and qualities that make them amazing Pokemon. Our idea for a steel type evolution would be Sturdion, a slow, offensive, analytic pivot. This robotic fox will have the ability analytic and a momentum move such as Volt Switch to give a hit and give a free switch to its partners. This Pokemon sounds very similar to Magnezone, but it functions differently. Now, Magnezone has Volt Switch and the analytic ability to try and fulfill the same role, but our evolution will fill this role better as not only it has better bulk, but can wish and protect to heal itself if needed or even pass wishes into its teammates. Magnezone, as we all know, is better left to its incredible niche of trapping steel types with Magnet Pull. Thus, Sturdion sounds decently interesting and warrants the B tier. Next up, we have Ghost. Now, Ghost is mainly seen as a good offensive type as it's very hard to resist it because it hits everything that isn't normal, dark, or gorganical of at least neutral. Now, defensively, Ghost is not the best type ever, but it still has two immunities, which isn't bad at all. Now, the problem with trying to make a Ghost type offensive Pokemon is that you're competing for attention with Miss Magius, Dragapult, Gengar, Spectre, Alolan, Marowak, Mimikyu, Flutter, Mane, Annihilate, Zorark, Hisui, Aegislash, Lacephalon, Saralet, Chandelure. <gasps> Do you see the problem yet? Now, on the defensive side, it's also honestly hard to find a niche for a pure ghost type with evolution sets that's not covered by things like Hopagrigus, Jellicent, or even Eevee like Dusclops. That is, unless you want to give this Pokemon Shadow Tag, in which case, let me call 911 real quick and come back to you. What we decided on was Dredion, a fast, bulky Pokemon who would support its team with moves like Wish and Parting Shot, sort of like a discount Grim Snarl with Wish. We could have given this more HP, but Ghost Pokemon are usually low on HP, so we decided on that design choice. This Pokemon, designed without that much conviction, will go to C tier. Next to last, we have Fighting. Now, Fighting is kind of a weird one. Offensively, it hits a whopping 5 types, which is great, but it's resisted by 5 types and ghosts are immune to it. Good fighting types try to either deal a lot of damage anyway via their second type, like Urshifu Single Strike, or sheer power and non-stab coverage like Unkelder with Guts and Flame Orb. However, one of our favorite Pokemon in terms of playing around being a fighting type is Surfetched. 
Surfetched is, despite not being a top tier Pokemon, an interesting and fun Pokemon thanks to Scrappy letting it spam close combat safely against ghost types, as well as its high attack and access to first impression. Now, while we can't grasp the absolute utter awesomeness of Surfetch's design, we can fix one of its flaws, the speed. The fastest Scrappy fighting type is Flamingo, with its base 90 speed, which isn't exactly blazing fast. Thus, we present Brawlion. This Pokemon can be an incredible brain-dead close combat spammer, especially if equipped with a choice item. And honestly, from there, just give it a few coverage moves like Knock Off or Priority Move in Mock Punch and have fun. Easy B tier. Last but not least, we have Bug. Now, Bug sounds like a very boring type, like it's resisted by seven types for speaking out loud, but that is the beauty of it. To balance this awful type, Gang Freak decided to give it some of the best moves in the game, like U-Turn and First Impression. With those two moves, you can easily create a fast glass cannon and call it a day, but we have a better idea an ability that has only been given to bug types until Gen 5 and has since only been given to non-bug types as a hidden ability. We're talking about Speed Boost. This ability will be the bread and butter of Rocheon. This Pokemon with this amazing attack will be able to come on on a weak hit or free switch and threaten anything it faces with a plus two priority first impression. Once it does that, it gains a speed boost for free, which allows it to reach 376 speed assuming max speed investment. This allows it to outspeed anything that has base 121 speed or less. Cinderace, Alakazam, Arceus, Naganondo, Cyclozar, and anything slower than them, while still being very decently bulky so that it can carve many opportunities for itself to do the same thing throughout the match. Such a Pokemon uses the attributes of a bug type and is the epitome of what we're trying to do in these designs, S tier. So, what did you think of our evolutions? Do you think we overrated one of our beloved designs? Maybe we missed some idea in another type. Feel free to let us know in the comments. And once again, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out these videos out while you're at it. And on that note, have a nice one.